Hi everyone, my name's Michelle and I'm Mama Loves UGB here on FlossTube, but also over on Instagram as well. This is not the Sunday morning briefing, this is the second part of my special series for Sampler September or September Sampler Soiree. The first part I showed you my antique samplers and the samplers that I'd finished, and this part I'm going to show you the samplers that I have as whips. And then I dug out the ones that I have as kits, and then I dug out the ones that I really like, that I want to stitch. And I don't mind telling you, I've massively overcommitted to this video. <laughs> so I have got lots and lots of stuff to show you. It may end up being uh, a two part going into a three part. So we'll see how we go on. One little confession, I've not ironed anything. It became a direct choice between doing the video or doing the ironing. So uh, you'll just have to forgive me. I know at home you guys have got samplers and, and whips that look like mine that are a bit screwed up and in project bags and things like that so I hope you forgive me uh, and I hope you really enjoy looking through what I've got on the go what I've got planned and just the ones that I that I really like I've tried to pick out something for everyone I keep looking over there because I've got it all laid out on the bed um, I've tried to pick out something for everyone I've got some samplers which are reproductions I've got some samplers which are um, ones which are done kind of more in the style of reproductions and I've got some ones that I guess are a bit more modern. So uh, yeah, make sure you've got your stitching and a brew. Sit back and I'll show you what I've got. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is the samplers that I've got as whips. I haven't counted them. I don't know how many there are. I've just got all the project bags stacked. I'm not even entirely sure what is in each of the project bags, if I'm honest. So it's gonna be bit of a joy to find out. So the first one and if you follow me regularly you haven't you've seen this one not so long ago this is Isabella Johnson or Johnston. Uh, this was in the Antique Sampler and Needlework Quarterly magazine it was Antique Needlework and Sampler Quarterly magazine it's one of the two I always get it the wrong way around. Um, but I believe the ladies behind this are Needlework Press. So, 1854, Isabella Johnston, and it's got that beautiful big red cow on it. And I started this for my sampler May, for my mania. I started 12 samplers. Well, the plan was to start 12. I think I only got as far as 10, maybe nine. So, these are the colours, lovely colours, greens, reds, and this is where I am. I'm stitching it on a piece of 32 count Zweigart. I'm not entirely sure what the colour is, to be perfectly honest with you, and I've only got the top two rows done. Let's come over here, see if it'll go a little bit more as it should be and uh, you can see that I've started on these rows here and this is sort of one of those ghost alphabets that blends into the background a little bit more it does show up more in person but probably on camera it looks a little bit a little bit vacant so as I said that's a 32 count the reason it's a 32 count is because it does have some blends so it's got some threads where you use one DMC strand in one colour or one DMC strand in another colour. And I've dropped the bag, so dear. I've got to that age where I make noises when I bend down for stuff. It's not good. So that's my first one. Let's have a look and see what's in the next bag. Now I'm probably gonna say loads of times, I love this one, I wanna get back to stitching it. But I love this one and I want to get back to stitching it. This is Baltimore Album by Carolyn Manning Designs. And so this is a slightly different take, I think, on a sampler. It's based on more of a quilt sampler. But I wanted to show you a range of different things that I think could be considered to be samplers. Um, because not everybody likes the same thing. And I've had so many comments recently from folks who are saying, oh, I've never been into samplers, but since you started showing things a bit more, um, I'm really getting into them, I'm really getting to like them. So I just wanted to show you some, some other things really. And 
that's where I am on this one. I'm stitching it on a piece of 32 count. Let me just find the Herman of Copenhagen. Is it 32 count? Yeah, and it's that. That's the colourway there. So it's kind of like an olivey, an olivey green colour. And I just absolutely love that border. And it will have nine of the white blocks in the centre and that border all the way around. And I don't know if you know, but Caroline Manning, you can go straight onto her website and you can get all her things as downloads. I believe you can get them all. Okay, what have we got next? This one is Kezia Campbell, or Kezia Campbell, which is after a Scottish sampler, although it's not a true reproduction of a sampler that exists. It's a sampler that takes Scottish motifs and kind of puts them together in a kind of Scottish looking sampler. So I started this one Christmas time, I think. I think it might have even been my Christmas Day start. And I'm stitching it on a piece of 38 count Simply Taupe by Hazel Anderson from Foxglove and Lace. And I've actually got a decent bit done on this one. Excuse the fold right in the middle. So there we are. So I've got the main skeleton of the sampler laid out and I've got the words which are over one, a lot of grass to go, and the background to finish off. And if you remember, this was a sampler which depicts the five children that my granny gave birth to. So, I love that one. My granny was Scottish, hence why I chose a Scottish design for it. I'll try not to zip them back up because I know that's a bit annoying. Now this one I do have to apologise for the state of because I took this one out of the bag to try and see whether I could do them without ironing them and this was one of the ones that I was a bit worried about. So this is Jane Fiddies, 1835 and beautiful sampler there, complete with turkey work on the bottom of the house and if you remember, this was the one that I had thought about changing the initials on. And I quite fancied making this one a Harry Potter sampler and just putting initials of all the characters from Harry Potter on there. Just because um, we don't have a very big family, but all the family we do have, have the same surname. So it would just be a lot of the same letter over and over again. So that's why I thought about doing something a little bit different with her. And I'm stitching her on 37 count corn tassel from Access Commodities. And I started well with this one. And by well, I mean I got the border outline done. And then I just haven't been back to her. But I do, do love her. So there is one very creased border. I'm hoping that you're liking seeing the patterns, perhaps as much as you're liking seeing my random progress on some of them. And I'm stitching that on the DMC, which in this case is all on in Flossaway bags, so it's not even as if I can show you really nicely what the colours are. But hey, who have we got in here? Ah, now this one. This one I have to get a move on with because I have already promised to lend the chart for this one. This one I started in May as well for Mania and I'm just going to take it out of the bag just because it's one of those ones that's got an actual photograph on it so we'll have double bubble glare otherwise. So it's called Heaven Above by Midsummer Night Designs and I've shown this one relatively recently obviously having only started it in May and it says, there is a land of pure delight where saints immortals reign. Eternal day excludes the night and pleasures banish pain. 
There everlasting spring abides and never fading flowers. Death like a narrow sea divides this heavenly land from ours. So, not a traditional sampler. It's not got an alphabet, but it does have a verse and it does have quite a lot of sampler motifs on it. So that's why I've included it. As I said, I've not just stuck to the absolute traditional reproductions in the bits that I've pulled out. And here it is, here's my progress. And I'm stitching this on a piece of fabric that I dyed myself. And I can't remember off the top of my head if it's a 38 count or a 36 count. I think it's probably a 38 count. And I remember having more done than that actually. But never mind. <laughs> so I've got the big sun to put in there. The words which won't actually take that long. And you can see this is the worst piece of fabric I've ever cut because it is so wonky. <laughs> but I shall pin it to mount it so it'll be fine, she says. Uh, let's just put that back in the right bag. Otherwise I shall never find things again. So this one, another one in the sampler style. And this is actually part of a sampler. The real, the real, the antique sampler is on the back. So you can see it's not necessarily the whole design, but it's an adaptation of the design. And it's called All Joys for Thine by Blackbird Designs. I'm sure you've seen it around. And again, this was another one that I started during Mania. And here are the threads. Oh dear, what a, what a ram, rags tail those are. So there's lots of greens, yellowy greens, blues, a red or a pinky red. And I'm stitching this literally on a bit of an off cut of 36 count wren. I believe it is by picture this plus and it still has a thread hanging out there we go. you can just hear Ness in the background Chris is just putting her to bed uh, but her teeth are really sore at the moment she's got two or three wobbly ones and probably more pushing through so she's uh, Bless her, her teeth are hurting her a little bit at the minute. Next one, let's go for this one. This is another Blackbird design. And this is, no, I tell a lie. I do tell lies. This is Hands Across the, hands across the Sea. One of the downloadable ones, Sarah Spencer. And again, I'm sure you've seen this one as well lovely honeysuckle border. I absolutely love that border. It takes some stitch in mind, but I love the border. And I bought the 103 kit for it from Hoop and Frame. And this is a piece of 40 count picture this plus. And again, I can't remember, or is it? I think it is, yeah. Picture this plus fabric. And I'll put the name of it down below because I, I don't recall this one. And you can see I've literally only got part of a border and the start of a little fruit basket on that one. Now I haven't stitched on this one much because this one I do need extra magnification for. So 40 count, picture this plus, I do need extra magnification. Not do I got, that's fine, but picture this plus is a little bit tighter. Okay. Who is this? Who is this? Some of these things I haven't seen for ages. 
Ah, a Quaker Welcome by Lila Studio or Leela Studio, I beg your pardon. And I love this one. The the colours, the sort of dark colours with just the real pop of those bright bright colours, is amazing. And the bright colour is that one, which is a Weeks Dye Works Grapefruit, which is an absolutely gorgeous colour. And I'm stitching this on a piece of 40 count that I dyed myself. And I've really not got a very big start on this one. Just some letters in the centre. And I centre started this one, which I don't normally do, but there must have been a reason why I decided to centre start this one. So, yeah, I can't wait to get back to that one. Is there a reason I centre started it? No, sometimes I centre start if there isn't a good kind of corner. I would normally start on the top left, so sometimes I would tend to start if there isn't a good corner, but there's a fine corner on that one, so I must have just decided on a whim that I was going to do a centre start. I do that sometimes. Okay, now this one I think I'm actually going to restart. This is a huge, huge sampler called Quaker Seasons of Friendship by Crown and Thistle. And it's absolutely massive. Massive, massive, massive. Does it even give me the dimensions anywhere? 440 by 250. So that's pretty big for me. And I started stitching this quite some time ago and I think I might restart it because it's going to end up being massive although I do like it so that's my progress so far this is on a piece of 29 count using a silks for you red and actually now I've got it out <laughs> I do like it I do like it. It would make an absolutely massive, massive sampler. So it'd be nice for sort of the back of a chair or it would be, it'd be a devil to frame, wouldn't it? It'd be an absolute bank breaker to frame it. So I don't know. I could restart it or I could just carry on. As I said, I'm stitching it with the silks for you and I've got a big hank of the silks for you so it's not a case that I haven't got enough floss to finish it and I've already started it so maybe I'll just get on with it it's a lovely stitch on 28 count or 29 count 27 count something around there it's quite quite big stitches <laughs> been doing this long Michelle no not long so there's that one what else have we got who is in here This one, again, is a slightly more unusual one, um, and it's called Solomon's Temple. And I'm stitching this one with the DMC on a piece of 36 count platinum, and I do remember that. And Again, I haven't worked on this for a long time. It was in my whip go, which actually means that I've probably just completely ignored it because I've been really bad with my whip go. I didn't realise how defiant I was with my own self when I set goals. <laughs> Turns out I'm one of those people who just is very defiant in that way. So there, I can't even see you. There is my progress on that one. So I just absolutely love the birds on it. So I've got the border in 
nearly three places. It's going to be a little bit tight on the bottom, but I think it's going to be okay. I probably should, before I do any more, run that border all the way round and then get Mama to surge it because there's not going to be a lot of additional room on that one. This isn't going too bad. This is going a little bit quicker than I thought we were going to get there. Still got a few more though. Who's in this little packet? Oh, I love this one. I absolutely love this one. This is Louise de la Plagne by Rafle de Soir. And I absolutely love this one. I'm stitching this on a piece of 40 count Zweigart in Heather, but I think it's someone who's dyed it that colour. I don't think it's a, a colour that you can buy from Zweigart or that I've ever found again. And again, I haven't got too bad a start on this one. So, have I got it around the right way? Yeah. Who am I kidding? My back's not that happening. <laughs> have I got it around the right way? Yeah, I definitely have. So, it is actually a sort of a pale purpley colour, but it seems to be washing it out a little bit. But I've done... Uh, sort of the middle row of letters and I'm working down on those flowers down at the bottom there. I've been trying to space it out and do some letters and some flower work um, every time I stitch it because if you do too many letters you get bored of them and if you do too much flower work it's a lot of confetti. And that's just being stitched on in the DMC as well. who's in here ah another hands across the sea stitch along that was a hands across the sea start along and this one is stuck in the bag i'm having a week of getting things stuck in the bag let me just move that along there does that help a bit better. so this is from traditional stitches um, it was their 20th anniversary stitch along or start along. Anne Morrison. And there she is. And did I write down what my fabric was? Now it says this is Access Commodities Russian tea cake. Oh yeah, the other one was corn tassel, wasn't it? I remember buying them both at the same time. And again, I have not got a lot of progress on this one. Just the top border. If you've never tried Access Commodities fabric before, it's really, really nice. But it does come out just a little bit thicker than Zweigart, which I quite like. I quite like. I stitch in hand so it all gets softened up anyway. Yeah, I picked this one out because I thought you might just like to see it and I wanted to see it again after the, all this time. This is a bit of something slightly different. So this is by iStitch and this is the Burgundy Sampler. Let me just get the proper name. Burgundy Band Stampler. And when this is finished, this is going to be two metres long because I'm stitching mine over two on the 28 count banding. And I've done probably. about just over half of the first meter. So I've got quite a lot more to go. But there's been a lot of these band samplers done by um, iStitch. I'm sure it's iStitch, let me just, let me just verify. Lady's name's Carol, I can remember that. iStitch, yeah, iStitch design. 
there's been quite a few of these and she does I think she does one most years and they're different colours so there's been the, the jade band sampler the burgundy band sampler the blue band sampler I mean you can stitch them in whatever colour you like but the idea is that they come out every week just a small piece a couple of rows of letters every week for about half a year and if you keep up with it if you keep up with it not like me then by the end of that time you'll have that beautiful long sampler which people roll around spools and leave displayed beautifully or hang vertically and they look absolutely fantastic so yeah that's another thing that I can't wait to get back to so much so I put it on my whip go and ignored it <laughs> but I do really want to stitch on it here is Sarah no not Sarah Spencer Sally Spencer uh, by Birds of a Feather. Tough cookie to find, but here is my progress on her. Now I'm stitching her on a piece of 36 count ale by Picture This Plus, and I've got a needle half hanging out on the bottom, and that's where I am. So she does look a little bit darker than in the photo, but she is showing up to me in person and I think those bright blues are going to really really pop on that fabric so that's Sally Spencer how many more whips have I got about five or six so I think what I might do is just do my whips in one part and then I'll do my kitteds and my want to stitch if I live to be 375 pile in a separate show so you can have a chance to go and do something different eat and then maybe come back later another one that i absolutely adore that i just have not stitched much on rachel howells so i can hear brenda brenda's voice because brenda absolutely loves this, this is her favorite one and i've started it and i love stitching on it it's just one of those things that i have not gotten back to and this is a piece of 40 count now, I think it's mocha I think it's mocha and I've got the outline of the border at the bottom I've got the outline of the house the start of the tree uh, but that's about it I had planned to work on this every Sunday and pick out a sampler to stitch every Sunday but um, best laid plans of mice and men and I'm stitching that one in the DMC as well aren't we lucky to have DMC fabulous thread fabulous who's in here I feel like I'm like who behind the keyhole who's in here now this one actually might be in the wrong pile. It is, it is. That has got a, uh, a finished and one that I want to start in. So that is in the wrong pile. Another one that I started for Mania is this one, which is another design made to look sort of like an older sampler. This is called the Rising Harvest by Pineberry Lane and Pineberry Lane have their own website where you can download most of their their patterns and again I've got an abysmal abysmal start on this one <coughs> actually an embarrassingly small start on this one it's not going to be very big but I haven't done much on it either did you blink did you blink there we go try again uh, and this is a piece of 38 count fabric that I dyed using Dynaflow and I think this piece is in my video about Dynaflow so if you want to know how I got that and that's the back so it's a bit more mottled on the back if you want to know how I got that do go and have a look at that video I really rate Dynaflow paints I think they're one of the easiest and cheapest ways to get a really good range of colours that can give you loads of loads of good effects on fabric. Four more. This one 
actually those two are in the wrong pile as well they can be added to the want to stitch list because I haven't actually started them so three more this is my start on and I've only got actually I won't show you the chart because I've only got my working copy in all things be exceedingly diligent so I'll put a a picture up of that um, it's by Needlework Press and again this was a mania start this is a piece of 36 count linen that came from Fox Glove and Lace but it never had a name attached to it because I'd asked Hazel to dye me a piece for a, a particular project and uh, which in fact was the EF sampler which I haven't bought up where is that is it still up here I don't know I've got the EF sampler started as well which I have shown you lots of times before so we'll not worry too much about that but there is my start of in all things be exceedingly diligent and this is one of those long horizontal samplers that I love and then on the bottom there is a, a companion piece to it um, which is called and be kind I believe I've got it to show you uh, in the next segment for this video now then um, and I'm gonna put that on the other half So, there it is. I think I changed the blue. The blue seemed to be a completely sort of jarring colour to me when I put the palette together. So, I think I actually used blackboard, which is a very, very dark blue almost black from the gentle art but you can definitely see it's blue and I'm stitching that one whoops with the DMC as well apart from that blackboard and then this one a slightly different take again on a sampler um, and this is by Long Dog Samplers, Beauty Spot. I'm still including it. It still reminds me of a sampler, just because of some of the, the animals and some of the motifs on there that you might see on some samplers. And it's on a piece of 38 count that I dyed myself. I haven't managed to get it surged yet. It managed to escape the surging. So I'm going to try and not show you how scraggy that piece of fabric is. And that is the bottom of one of the motifs. It is in fact the bottom of the box there. Can you hear the rain? We have had again some biblical rain this week. And I'm stitching that one with the DMC as well. any of you would like to show this video to your significant other halves and perhaps the next video that's going to come after that and say well at least I haven't got this many then please feel free to do that. <laughs> I've got broad shoulders I can take it and the last thing that I'm stitching on is a little bit of an update piece it's the black sampler that I've designed for Black November uh, Black November sampler I think it's called yeah um, and it's the brainchild of Jacob from Modern Folk Embroidery and he's trying to get people to look at black samplers or very dark samplers and stitch one in November so I have actually designed one which I told you about in my normal update video but I have done I don't need that board I have done the next row so when I showed it to you on the Sunday morning briefing it just had the top two rows and now it has the middle row well not quite the middle row it has another row shall we say so I'm hoping to release that sampler 
in October, mid-October. So you've got time to get the chart and whatever you want to stitch it on, ready for November. Right, that's it. That is a whistle-stop tour of my things that I've got started, my samplers that I've got started. Yes, I've got too many. No, I don't care. <laughs> But that's what it's best. That's what it is. That's what we like about this hobby. We stitch what we want when we want. I am going to do my kitted samplers and some sampler charts that I've got to show you in the next episode. So I'll hope you join me then. Stay classy, stitches. <laughs>